There we are. Recording. Thank you. There we'll go. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Um, so welcome to our first planning meeting of January 2021. Um, the chair, Mike Pringles, unable to join us tonight, so I'm vice chair uh, standing in to take the meeting. Um, for those that are joining us online, welcome and um, or a later date seeing us on YouTube. Um, I'm Stuart Wright and our officer today who will be running the meeting is Mark Webster, our planning officer. So I'm uh, moving first to our first item 633 stroke 20 declarations of any disposable cuneary interest. Just a quick checkpoint now. Do you want me to share uh, the uh, presentation yep. back now? Please don't. <sighs> I'm not aware of any declarations, so we'll take that as none. Uh, apologies for absence, 63420. Chris, do I, yep. I have apologies from councillors Barreto, Canham, and Hodgkinson. Thank you, Chris. I think Jane James as well, also um, a couple of days back, uh, sent in the message saying she wouldn't be able to make it. Thanks very much. Then moving forward to 63520, the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of December, uh, which were received by full council. Um, we're happy to just run through those. There were one, two, three. Okay. We're happy to confirm those minutes as say they've been through full council, so I shouldn't think there's too much there too. I think Baden Bridge has, needs a, an L in there. But, uh, oh. right, I'll make it. Have you got that, Chris? I can't see where it, where is it under the um, five under nine. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to cover that later, of course. Oh yeah, right. Last bullet point, Chris. If you've got, if you've noticed that. Thank you. And then on to the main body of the evening, 63620 planning applications to consider. So we've got 1386 up first. Um, Mark, take us through that. Yeah, sure. So um, this is one to seven um, Barry Road, um, sort of complex of uh, buildings which is uh, proposed to turn into uh, individual houses. Um, Havefree Housing Partnership um, have stated that uh, as a not-for-profit affordable housing and social housing association, uh, it's their intention to provide 15 homes, all 15, as affordable housing. However, uh, and the, the Breckland Housing and Enabling Officer is, is uh, very happy with the, uh, the that proposed provision. Um, I should just say that from the, for the purposes of the planning application, um, that the application states, uh, for reasons that uh, the housing partnership mentioned there, that there will be at least four houses that will be uh, classed as affordable, and the other 11 potentially could be sold at some point as at full market rate. So on assessing this, this application, uh, we should we should work on that assumption, um, even though it, it, it does seem likely that uh, all of it will be affordable housing, at least in the immediate, immediate future. Um, so I think most people will be familiar with the site at the, the sort of junction of uh, London Road and Berry Road there. Um, this is quite a useful aerial view that uh, actually highlights quite nicely the, the bits where it's proposed to add um, and also uh, some of the sort of uh, linking bits between the buildings that are proposed to be removed. Um, we've got a, a, a quite nice uh, site plan there which shows um, the overall layout, how things will be, and you can see these little red numbers. Hopefully people can see my uh, uh, cursor going there. I, I'm assuming everyone can see this. If there's anybody having not seen these, <laughs> please do let me know. Um, it's also probably worth noting that um, there's no actual commitment to uh, specifically to replace uh, trees, uh, uh, which uh, I'll come to in a minute. So this number of trees are going lost. Uh, they have put in this indicative plan, which shows uh, um, potentially uh, landscaping to include seven uh, new trees to, to partly replace the ones being lost. 
I'll just come back to this one here. Um, if anybody wants to, to ask me about any of these points in more detail, uh, please do. But basically, uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to see this and, uh, and note all the points that are made there. I don't propose to go through everything here now, as I said, because hopefully everyone has had this in advance and be able to see it. Um, but it does actually go into sort of certain details about the refuse collection and so forth on that slide. Uh, I've also included here this this one's quite uh, useful just to show the the boundaries where each house um, the houses aren't huge but they're they're certainly um, sizable enough for the housing office to, to be to be happy with them and they all do have their own little individual garden plot as well as a, a small amount of sort of external green space which is sort of communal around the car parks. Uh, so this is what it uh, look like in elevations. Uh, just a sample there. You can see uh, basically dividing this building into individual houses with their own front door. And the uh, more historic part of the complex, again, is to be uh, is being retained and converted into into housing. Again, as I say, not not huge by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, apparently it does meet the necessary standards. Um, this one is showing where those the trees uh, to be removed would be. So again, hopefully you can see that we're that they propose to lose this this one and this one and a number uh, of houses at the far end there. Um, and the trees that would be removed are listed here. Uh, quite a substantial size yew and holly and quite a number of other fruit trees, let's say being lost. Um, and the uh, um, ecological consultant for Norfolk County Council uh, has said that they would require further information about uh, the potential of both the trees and the existing buildings uh, to support roosting bats. So at the moment, they're, they're not satisfied that enough information has been supplied. Uh, so obviously, the applicant would have to come back with a more detailed bat survey before uh, anything further goes ahead. Um, back to you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Chris Harvey, I saw your hand. Uh, Chris. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Much has been before. I'm a bit concerned about the access onto the very road. Uh, I mean, that's a really busy road and they're going to turn across the traffic and into the traffic, joining in from the, uh, from the old A11. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's not another access point further down by Roger By Good Moods as well, is there? No, there isn't. No, it's just the one coming out onto the Berry Road by the traffic lights. That's right. And as I understand, you know, the, it's a reuse of the site. There was existing access there for officers when it was Cunningham John's. Um, yes, there certainly was. But I mean, the amount of traffic coming out of the offices was mini school and only, what, once in the morning and once at night when they were finishing. And they yeah. had a heck of a job joining the flow of traffic. Um, yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just a bit concerned. And I'm all for the proposal in general, but the access onto the Old Berry Road does concern me, I must admit. I, th I think, um, you know, they're going to be limited in uh, in other options. As say, if they come out onto Bygod Muse somehow, it then puts even more pressure on that. I know there's a few people who use that, but uh, I think we probably need to just get the traffic um, officers input into that, which will be done anyway. I think when North County Council will be uh, yeah, I was just say, Sorry, Chair, I was just going to say highways uh, have offered no objection to the scheme. Okay. okay. So it, it's something we can put down as concern, I, I, I think. Um, um, but I, I, you know, I don't see you know, too much um, joy other than if you get make them turn left out of there, um, which may, may put a bit of pressure because they'll probably turn around in the chase entrance. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you do that. Yeah, but, that would be my if it's just to make it left turn only. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's you know, if, if the uh, committee. Are, happy with that proposal or something we can um, flag up Mark. Um, did I see another hand up? Yeah I have my hand up if I may. Thank you. Uh, thanks Stuart Chair. Um, uh, yeah I think I agree with um, Chris's concern though. I did actually have a look on the Breckland website um, and I couldn't see any response at all from highways um, so uh, I'm pleased that they have actually looked at this, although I know what Mark just said about there being no objection. Um, I just wondered if there was an opportunity to um, 
what? To look at a pedestrian uh, access linking the site to London Road, not just the Berry Road. I think if I understood the drawings correctly, people could only come in and out um, off the Berry Road, which is quite a big, um, and as Chris said, it does get quite busy there. Um, I wondered if there was uh, at least an opportunity for pedestrians to go straight onto the London Road and down. Um, although they may want to sort of make it a sort of, you know, restricted access type area. Um, but generally, I think it's good that they're preserving the sort of the building and they're preserving the historical aspects of it, um, which is good. Um, most of those trees were um, fruit trees, uh, I, uh, I noted. Um, uh, shows my ignorance as gardening, but uh, I wonder if there's opportunity to um, relocate them rather than just destroying them and digging them up and burying them. But um, I don't think they're too substantial from memory um, from the various times I've been down there. Um, but um, that was really my only observation. But I will follow up with highways about the access uh, issues. Um, we have spoken in the past about the possibility of um, a box junction in that area because there are issues with um, the lorry park and the car park on the other side. And I think there used to be a, a box junction for that, which is directly opposite yeah. this side. Um, and I think it's sort of faded away and been resurfaced and been lost. Um, but I'll follow that up separately with the council. Yeah, um, sorry to, to butt in again. I just wanted to do a correction there. I haven't actually got the comment in from Highways yet. That was my uh, that was my mistake. It was uh, something else that made no comment. So Highways haven't actually commented yet. They haven't made an objection yet, but they haven't actually supported it either. So uh, apologies for that. Um, the tree the tree slide is up there, by the way. There now it's as you say the the fruit trees are, are not huge. Um, uh, well larger than me but uh, <laughs> they're not a substantial uh, tree as as i said the two substantial trees on the side are the, uh, uh, t3 and t4 that you can see at the top of your slide there really those are the two largest ones uh, the fruit trees I, th I think would be significant and being uh, i certainly think if, if it was possible to transplant them i suspect it's going to be a little bit um too late to do that really they'll, they'll be too well established to, to move successfully i suspect um but uh, certainly if um uh, if it was possible to get uh, replacement trees at other locations, I think we, we do have sites, suitable sites, where we could host those potentially. Um, comment, Terry's uh, sorry, call. Chair, yeah, I, I can't get this hands up thing going, so I'm oh, sorry for interrupting. Coming if in. we lose all these trees, and most of them, as you say, are fruit trees, would it be possible for us to request that they put fruit trees back? the few that they are putting back. That is the sort of thing we can request if, if the committee wishes to do so. Well, I, you know, I'm a big uh, supporter of having as many fruit trees as you can around because that's free fruit for the public kind of thing. So, <laughs> hmm. yeah, they certainly have multiple benefits. Yeah. OK, that's one, something we can take forward then, um, Mark. Um, just back to Terry's point about um, pedestrian access. I think if we looked at the plan, the pathway still does continue to the wall on the um, north side there into Roger by God News. There is an existing gateway through the wall there. And the way that they've um, done the path seems to indicate that they will carry that through to that gateway. Um, I don't know, is that on that slide there, if you look at the middle at the top, there's a, 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 um, in the middle of the, our site that we're looking at, there's a little L shape or reverse L shape going along the wall there. And that is where there's an existing gateway in the wall now. So I suspect they're looking to use that for residents to, to come in. Hmm. Yeah, are you, are you referring to this one here, Chair? This, no, this here. with your arrow left. Yeah. Where that little star is. Okay, right. To the left of that is a little path inside the boundary. Oh, this one. This one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, yep. and there's a gateway through the wall there. Is it existing? So I suspect they're looking to, to utilise that existing um, entrance. Yeah, I can't see for definite. It does look like it's still a path, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, um, you know, I've I think most people seem to be supportive of the idea of a reuse of the existing buildings, um, sympathetic conversion of the older cottages. Um, there seem to be you know, 
a fair amount of parking um, to go to the site, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but the traffic issues probably our biggest drawback of it. Uh, and I did make reference to the gatehouse to Mark earlier, but the use of slates on that um, extension rather than existing pan tiles, which are on the, the front of the cottage. So I was hoping that we could ask if the pan tiles could be done because slates seemed a little bit out of kilter with the um, front cottages there. Otherwise, do we have any further comments? I'm sorry if I've missed anybody. Chris, are you able to see the uh, chat at the moment? Because I've, uh, I, I'm staring, I've got, I'm not. Uh... Can't, see, can't see anything, Mark. So, okay. Uh, so I think uh, probably supporter, um, obviously, bearing in mind the traffic concerns. Um, sorry, Terry's got his hand up. Terry? Terry, did you want to come in? Sorry, that's my fault. I didn't raise it down. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so Mark, um, unless anybody's got any other concerns, uh, I would think that we're a supporter, but as uh, so Dennis's point about asking for fruit tree replacements, yeah. uh, Chris's point about the traffic concerns, and, you know, conjunction with North Carolina Council. Um, um, can I just clarify about the traffic? Uh, do you want to say... Uh, we, we request highways would consider a left tone only out of there or a box junction or just simply to raise uh, concerns about the access and egress. Did you want to say anything specific on the on the traffic I, issue? Basically? I personally would try and suggest a left turn, but that's for the committee to decide. But do we have any strong feelings? I, I would agree with left turn only if we can. Mm-hmm. And we if we're happy with that proposal. Um oh, yeah. be my chair just highlighting that at the time the time we're making a decision, we haven't um been um, we haven't got information as to highways comments. No. Um, but we would ask them to consider um the fact that it's you know it's a very busy junction um and um sort of you know ask them to make sure they properly look at the access issues and uh, suggest any possible sort of improvements we, we're not the experts but maybe they can think of something and suggest perhaps left turn only okay, yep. okay. Happy that, Mark? yeah i can i can word that yeah and the other one was the the uh, pan tiles rather than slates considered rather than slates on the gatehouse extension wasn't it i think okay thank you are you are you ready for the next one? I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK. Right. So uh, Forest Retail Park. So as, uh, as, as those of you here last time will remember, um, we have uh, a new Costa and K Costa here and KFC where that red uh, mark is there going in on the Forest Retail Park. And the, you can see the plan of the, the Costa there. Uh, most of the signage that is mentioned uh, are around the Costa, uh, as part of the, uh, most of the signage mentioned in this application is around the Costa. Um, permission has been granted for these buildings, but they're just looking to have uh, this additional signage. Um, the, one that's the, sort of, the ones that are most dramatic out of what's actually quite a lot of signs in the application are these large ones here. And um, as you can see, uh, there's this one on the corner here, which will just move that slightly, um, be uh, next to and above the, the existing sign there, one uh, along the London Road there, and one within the site as well. Um, so as I said, there's, there's quite a number of different signs. There's a drive-through bit here, for example. Um, but yes, a, a number of signs all around the, the Costa and KFC. Before I throw it open, I'll just offer my initial thoughts were that uh, um, the bits around the actual site itself, you know, I don't think you're going to do much with that. Uh, um, but I did ask Mark to see if we had made sufficient comments about um, litter um, as part of the signage. I know we talked about the bins before, but just reiterate our request that um, we try and put some signage up to take people to deal with their litter responsibly. Um, my concerns with the one next to Mr. Shoes, I wonder if we're going to get a, 
a trade off with McDonald's wanted a, a bigger sign there to to compete with it. And similarly at the bottom there with the one on the junction, there's an existing forest retail site with brick pillars at the underneath that. And to me, you seem to be favouring one over the other. I think you know they need to work with the forest retail um, managers to come up with uh, a fair signage for all there. Because, say we've got McDonald's on them. Um, in Sainsbury's do a cafe service, so um, it looks a bit large compared to the the others um, shown there. But I'll, I'll throw the floor open. Any Chris? Chris, you got your hand up? No, it wasn't me, Chair. Sorry, I don't know what happened there, but uh, uh, Councillor Jeremy's on. Okay, uh, Terry. Yeah, I was just going to uh, just comment on your point about litter. Um, uh, obviously, I, I litter pick pretty much most days or every other day. And without doubt, uh, Costa hot drinks cups. Um, and in that particular area, McDonald's hot drink cups at the moment are by far the most sort of prolific type of litter that we have around town. So um, I think the point about litter bins and signage encouraging people to use the litter bins um, is absolutely crucial. Um, there's a pathway from the Forest Retail Park through to Elverdon, and you just wouldn't believe the amount of litter on both sides of that path. It's really uh, extreme when people sort of drive and finish their drink as they get there. So any opportunity to emphasise that. Um, and just on signage, I have been separately talking to the Forest Retail Park because there is quite a number of their signs in that area um, which are quite dirty. The Forest Retail Park one, as you go into Sainsbury's on the left, is almost sort of unreadable because it's covered in sort of green slime and whatnot. Um, so maybe we might uh, uh, ask them about sort of maintenance plans and how they intend to keep these, you know, if they're not maintaining the ones they've got, they're now putting up new ones. Um, so we just emphasise sort of cleanliness and street signs and stuff, that'd be really useful. Okay, thank you, Terry. Yeah. Any further comments, please? No? Okay, Mark. Um, do we want to say supporter, but have concerns about the size of those signs and obviously the uh, enough litter signs and then Terry's point about the management of the signage? I can include that if that's the, the, wish, of, the wish of you all, as it were. Okay. If okay. Happy, thank you. Move on to the next one. OK, uh, Autumn Close. Um, so we're looking at the, the roundabout. Here's Hearth Way. Here's uh, London Road there. Or Norwich Road, rather. Um, and so this is the site on the corner of Autumn Close, uh, site backing on to Hearth Way there. And uh, Redgate is, is here. So this is uh, it's, it's put in as an extension. It's, it's, it's quite a it's a very substantial extension. Uh, it's from a, um, a bungalow. These these are pretty much to scale, um, so that you can see the sort of size of, him, of, of um, uh, the the new proposals. Um, it's it's basically going from a uh, a bungalow there to a, a larger. Or, or, pretty much the same footprint, but slightly larger two bedroom house. Um, here are the neighbours here and here. That's the house on Redgate and this is Autumn Close. Um, apparently there is a precedent of uh, just up the road, number seven. Now, I haven't, it wasn't uh, up to date on Google Maps, I'm afraid, so I can't give, show you a picture of, a, of, uh, of, one, of one that's had a similar uh, size increase on the same road. But uh, just again, give you an idea of what's proposed. Again, pretty much to the same scale as far as I can get it. That's what's there existing, and that's what is uh, proposed. Yeah, there we go. Back to you, Chair. Any comments, please? Happy to support this one. Yeah, uh, only concern is um, obviously the height uh, of neighbours into Redgate, but um, you know, they've not got any right to light and they're probably quite a way away. But um, I think, you know, unless we've got anything else to support. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
No, no objections? Support? No, no. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, now, as I said, there's more lights than regulars uh, this time. So we're on White Hart Street. Um, I suspect you all know the, the site involved. Um, just to sort of give you a little bit of um, uh, chronology for this one. Uh, when it was, uh, when if you've read the application form, you'll see that it was. It says, "Oh, this is this is a vacant site, uh, former day nursery." Uh, that's because the form is dated in October last year, um, and the photographs that are also on on the website submitted for the same application are actually from January. So, as you can see, the 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 shop is. Uh, in situ, uh, which I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, no real changes inside at all. Um, the same layout, um, basically, and it's just that, let's go back to the, uh, the nursery needed lots of loos, obviously, whereas they've just uh, changed that to a storage area for the supermarket. They've still got a loo. Um, so, as I said, basically, pretty much exactly the same layout, um, except it's now a shop. Okay, so this is a, a retrospective one. They are up and running. I gather they've been going well, you know, September, October time um, going through. Um, my thoughts were in terms of the display in the windows, the vinyls, something that we've commented in the past. Uh, we were against the blocking of windows. We like to people to window shop and look in. Um, rather garish um, for the conservation area, given that White Art Street is our probably best preserved street. And uh, we'll be looking to try and make more of it rather than uh, just the cheap and cheerful look that we have there. We did um, make comment, I think, many years ago, I'd say many years ago, a few years back in Bridge Street, where a garish colour scheme was put in place. But also on Powell House, we've commented about the vinyls in the windows blocking um, the in, in looking into the building. Um, and so that's my only concern, really, that is this appropriate for the conservation area? potentially they should have had a bit of guidance from planning to say something more um, appropriate for the street in question you've got the ancient house museum the lovely window just up the road and uh, <laughs> you take away from it by the this rather garish and brash thing jen you're coming in yeah i i totally agree with you um chair it it doesn't look right it's it's not in keeping with that area. I mean, that is a, it's one of our oldest, I think, isn't it? I mean, I'm not very much on the history of that area, but I, I really don't think it suits there. It's, it does make it look a bit tatty, really. So I, I, if they can remove them and we, the whole idea is window shopping. When we go window shopping, it's looking through. <laughs> so no, I, I, I agree with you. I, but I don't, I don't, I don't like it. It doesn't show the, the proof, true potential of the building. Yeah, we we have um, as a council, we had in planning in the past, we've adopted uh, a desire for um, more sympathetic um, things, especially in the conservation area. Um, so I don't think we're doing anything other than what we've you know, done in the past. It's just that. We don't have the the teeth to to stop these things happening. No, this is the only opportunity we really have to to, to make a comment, and uh, hopefully we'll do so uh, in the future as well. But I don't know whether anybody else has got anything um, you want to say about this one. Otherwise, uh, I would suggest we go back and say something more in keeping. Mm. Yeah, uh, anybody? No, I agree. Yeah. Read. Agree. Okay, so can I just, yeah, can I just clarify that, Joe? Are you, are you wishing to support but um, subject to uh, the vinyl windows and garage display being made more appropriate, or are you actually objecting to the no, application? I think people are you know, happy about it being used as a shop. Um, I don't think you want to turn down business, it's just that the um, advertising livery and uh, <laughs> the blocked up windows is not something that we were um we hadn't we've made comment in the past that we don't want to see that we want to see something more you know it's sympathetic to the area okay yep i can do that right on to the next one um we're uh tanner house um it's probably not a lot to be gained by really sort of discussing this further this came up at the last uh meeting 
um, and the town council has made its comments, which is basically supportive, um, but with a request that uh, the red brick be replaced by a, um, a grey or white or grey brick. Um, the only reason this has come up again is because of uh, basically this line here. Um, there was it's a it's a technical issue with the plans. Basically, um, they put the wall in slightly in the wrong place on the plans as submitted as part of the application. So that has now been changed so that the wall falls within the uh, the correct site, if you like, the ownership of the applicant rather than uh, spreading into an area that's owned by Breckland Council, which I assume means the car park. So. Um, as I say, I don't think there's a lot to be gained by sort of discussing this again. Um, the town council has made its comments. I, I assume, um, well, and, uh, can I assume, I suppose, that you wish to uh, just repeat your same comments as before? Because, as I say, nothing has really changed apart from it's in the right place. <laughs> I would suggest that that's probably the most repeat comments as before, um, unless yeah. anybody's got any other things to say. Okay. If, that, that sounds fine. Yeah. If there's if there's no objection, I'll carry on. So 1385 Burrell Way. Um, nice simple one again here. Really, uh, it's industrial units, and they want to put a sign on it. Um, got no strong. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. No problem. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Rattling through then. Uh, 66 Fairfields, um, something that's come up on a number of occasions. I did manage to find the front view of this one. Um, so it is a garage at the front, uh, as, as, uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, <laughs> or as, as our chair mentioned earlier when we, we looked at this. Uh, so uh, I managed to get the picture of, which I think is the right house. If not, it's one that looks very like it. Um, and it's on Fairfields. You can see the red plot on the left there. It's the uh, it's actually the sort of um, southern bits of, of Fairfields mm -hmm. there. Um, you can see just a little bit of the uh, the main road there and the schools sort of over this side of things. So um, that's what it looks like. Um, so we're looking at uh, a four bedroom house, basically. Uh, the garage at the front there had been used as a as a, a an extra bedroom, making a fifth. So the proposal is to to turn this bit at the front there into a salon. And this this blue arrow just makes that. I've just zoomed in slightly there, so you can see it. Basically, a couple of chairs uh, there for hairdressing purposes. Um, so they do say they've got. Th three to four uh, spaces on the drive so they don't think um, uh, parking should be an issue um, and and there it is basically uh, as I said another another conversion of a garage into a into a hairdresser's proposed I think Jen wants to come in yeah thank you uh, actually it's next door to that one mark oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah no. oh, uh, the whole garden is concreted out um what's bothering me is uh, i know um i know they've said that there's enough parking for three to four cars but has anybody been down there and seen it on its best days? <laughs> uh, because I've got some lovely photos if anybody wishes to see them. Um, I noticed when I was up there yesterday, because obviously I go over there um, quite a bit because my bubble's over there. Um, I know, <coughs> no, no sign up saying that they've applied for any planning permission and speaking to some of the neighbours, social distancing um they didn't even know about it so but i say i mean that road's horrendous for parking etc even if they done one car off the road i i, I can't support I, I can't support that because of the residents of you know and i feel that they should have had a planning um sign up saying that they've apl uh, uh, applied for planning permission to to change of put it into a, a business and not um keep it as the room that it was originally done for so no i'm sorry i can't support it okay, thank you. just um mark 
I presume they should have had a notice up on a lamppost. Is that a procedural that's thing that we need? a legal requirement. I, unless it's been suspended for COVID reasons, a lot of things have been sort of required to go online. But I, I haven't heard otherwise. I thought it was still a legal requirement to, for uh, for a notice to be posted on a nearby lamppost, as you say, but I would have to check that to be sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's always possible that there was one up there and, and it got removed. That, that sort of can happen, of course. Yeah, I'll say that's what concerns me because I say there's a neighbour two doors away from that one um, that didn't know about it and uh, some the other side didn't know about it either. So that's what concerns me. I mean, I've got some horrendous pictures of how that, that area is with the school being at the bottom, um, especially now with how the situation is obviously they're having to come out of different gates of children for safety um <laughs> but yeah i mean it, it's take your life in your hands to get down that road at certain times of the day so yeah okay any other comments please yeah oh, i have my hand up chair oh, oh sorry Chris. No, you're right. Uh, I, I, can't, I won't be commenting or voting on this because my wife has a hairdressing shop and I don't want to see it as a conflict. Great, that's noted. Thank you, Chris. Can I just say, um, Stuart, please, this kind of thing come up on the next uh, the next turning, which was Woodlands a few weeks ago. Did, yeah. And yep. the um, reason the committee, you know, went did vote against it. I mean, it's a different. It's a different application, and we do look at things differently. I know, but the reason the um, committee did actually vote against it was the parking issues. I say, I mean, I'm quite happy to send out voters of that area if I can learn how to do it. <laughs> can I just have a, a steer from the rest of the committee how we wish to? Uh, mm. I've got two people raised their hands. I can't see who they are. Can you just call out? Uh, I'm one of them, Chair. Yep, Terry. Yeah, no, I just uh, completely agree with Jenny's points there. I think uh, although we do look at things in um, individual merit, I think we need to be consistent. And I, I think several of us raised concerns previously. Uh, the problem is with people opening up businesses in sort of residential areas is they're just not designed for the amount of parking um, uh, generally. Uh, I appreciate, uh, I think I saw on the plan there, there wasn't too many sinks and sort of bays. So, you know, theoretically, you won't have too many people in one go. So I do understand that. But um, Fairfields, we know, is a particularly problem area in terms of parking. And the residents up there, you know, fed up enough with um, not being able to access their own gardens and sort of parking concerns um, generally. So um, I, I would have quite a lot of concerns about that. And uh, I think there's a bigger issue about conversion of private property into um, essentially sort of retail and service businesses. If people have an office at home and run a business from home, which is office based, then that's all well and good. When you start having people come in and go in different times of the day, presumably early in the morning, late at night, I just think it's a sort of, you know, a slippery slope where, um, you know, we won't be sort of protecting residential areas. So I, I completely agree with Jenny's points. Okay, thank you, Terry. Did I see another hand up from somebody? What was that? No. So are we happy to uh, refuse this and uh, make a comment for our reasons? Refuse it. Yep, thank you, Colin. Yeah, objection on the grounds of basically uh, uh, sort of parking issues. Um, yeah, oh, I can I can phrase that slightly different. Basically, inadequate uh, parking in the area, with particularly with reference to the school use, etc. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, um, on a small business for a very big one, uh, Tesco's are uh, proposing to, the large Tesco's up Kilberton Road, proposing to put in uh, a small number of electric vehicle charging points. Uh, so this is an advertising um, application. So it's, it's the advertising we're judging. And the reason for that is, uh, is well, it's, it's two things. There are some signs, which I'll show you on the next slide. Uh, but also one of the uh, charging points is has got a, a media screen on it. 
basically so it looks like the idea is that you sit there and uh, um and tesco will no doubt put out some little adverts some adverts for their products and uh, other sort of uh, content so it'll be a a screen basically uh, showing sort of tv type screen basically um on which is over here um so there is also some signage on it but as i said there's there's a, a number there's about for I think um, spaces for electric vehicle charging, uh, one of which is this, as I said, has this media screen on it. Um, and there is also some signage to indicate what it is. Uh, yeah, there we go. Any comments, please? So we have to support. Yeah, happy to support. I am. Yeah. Support. Super. Okay. Uh, so um, that's basically all the applications that I had in up to date. Uh, um, oh, sorry. I'm well, back to you, Chair, I guess. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I think that's, that's a lot. Um, so we're on to 63820 decisions of variance. I don't think you've got any, have you, Mark? No, as I was just about to say, <laughs> before jumping the gun, I haven't, no. So we've got 63920 items to be referred to the Greater Thetford Partnership. Um, we've got anything, please, can you shout? Chris, I've got Chris Kremen plus one raised their hand. Who's that? That's me again, sorry. <laughs> All right, Terry. Yeah. Right, uh, the only thing I was going to say on the Greater Thetford Partnership is the new website is now live. Um, Jack's been busy uh, sort of populating the website and also the Twitter um, with news and information. And um, those, um, I think they're monthly reports that we get um, are now all on the website. So if there's any that anybody has missed, sort of updates of what's been going in, you know, any councillors have missed, and um, they're all on there in sort of chronological order. So it's, it's well worth having a look. So um, it's been a long time coming to get a good brand and identity for great effect for partnership but um it is now all up there with the new logo and stuff so worth having a look okay, thank you for that, terry okay so moving then on to 64020 parish partnership um with the deadline has passed and gone but we have had our uh riverside path acknowledgement um from county to say it came in late um but they're going to hopefully hopefully some money left to assess it but uh, we won't know anything i think till march uh was that correct uh, mark yeah, that's right yeah yeah but obviously ideas for next year if people start getting those um going um it'd be useful to have those so that we can discuss them at a later date but uh, nothing further to do tonight on that Six four one twenty committee office update mark uh no nothing further chair <laughs> And then rapidly on 64220 community engagement. And again, nothing from me on that um, that I need to add. No, I don't think we've got anything as a council we can say on these matters. So with that, I shall call it today and thank everybody for their attendance. And thank you, Mark.